President Biden preparing to close out his European trip. He'll be speaking at the NATO meeting later this morning. Let's get to Kayla Tausch in Madrid with the very latest. Good morning, Kayla. Good morning, Melissa. NATO leaders here in Madrid are waking up to an earful from, from Vladimir Putin, who overnight said that Russia would be respond, forced to respond in kind if NATO's infrastructure expanded to Sweden and Finland. He also said that he would pursue, quote, different tactics in Ukraine, where he said his goals remain unchanged. Uh, now, Russia uh, leaders this week have been united in trying to choke off the funding for Putin's war machine while supporting Ukraine. But the split screen to this unity overseas is cratering support for most of these leaders back home with inflation skyrocketing and Ukraine preparing for many more months of war. So the solution from many of these Western leaders has been to support Ukraine militarily and in its own country with about $5 billion budget shortfall per month, while also trying to cap the amount of money that buyers pay Russia for its oil. Earlier this morning, I had an opportunity to speak with the Biden administration's architect for that potential price cap, and I asked him, what happens if Vladimir Putin won't pay that cap? We already have evidence that he is selling oil at extremely discounted prices. So that's already there. So we know that he's willing to sell. You, you know, there have been reports out there already by some of the buyers reporting at uh, 30 to $40 discounts in some cases, some places low. It's not even. So we know he's willing to sell it at a discounted rate because he needs the revenues for his war machine. Uh, Amos Hochstein said that conversations with partners, large and small, are just beginning now that G7 leaders have announced uh, an agreement to pursue a concept of a price cap. Of course, later today, President Biden will be hosting a news conference to close out the summit. And you can imagine that he will be facing many questions, especially on uh, NATO's comment yesterday that they're preparing for a long haul war in Ukraine. Melissa and Joe. Kayla, I have that very question that you asked. You posed and got the soundbite for, um, and, and and maybe it really gets to what if Putin? I mean, it's it's sort of a, a game of chicken. What if Putin says, you know what, I'm not going to sell that oil. Let's see who's stronger at right. this point. I mean, I guess they're hoping right. that that he's and just so desperate he's going to sell at any price. Right, and of course the question was, what if Putin doesn't sell? Not if what if Putin doesn't right. buy? You know, jet lag five days in is still getting to me. Um, but you know, there have been reports that Russia's uh, price for production is about ten dollars per barrel, so it's extremely low. And there are also reports that he's been cutting off gas supply on Nord Stream One to Europe to try to choke off or withhold energy uh, to European buyers as well. So certainly he holds many of the cards. But you heard uh, Hoekstein say there that he believes that because they're selling. Uh, in some cases, $30 per barrel or even lower in other cases, he said, that they believe that that, that is feasible. But, uh, you know, from the response that we got from Putin overnight, it certainly doesn't sound like he's a willing negotiator in that arena.